Hello, welcome to Azure Terraformer. It's release day from sunny Orlando, Florida. I'm here at the Pop, the Pop Century Resort here in Walt Disney World. Um, I just just got done doing Disney with the family, and man, my feet hurt. Um, it is uh, 3.49 of re the release of the Terraform provider, and I'm here looking at the and all all the good, the bad, and the ugly with you here today. Um, so let's get started. So right off the bat, we got some breaking changes. So this is kind of a big deal. Um, anytime this happens, it changes the behavior of the provider. So if you choose to upgrade to this release or any version forward, um, you better you better expect this um, this this behavior and test test your code with this behavior before you go try it. Um, so this is particularly with the app service using IP restrictions and cores. So if you this this is really when you're trying to lock down access to things hosted on your app service using IP res IP restrictions is just short of setting up private virtual networks um, it's when you know the IP address of the caller um, maybe this is um, an Azure front door or an Azure application gateway um, and you have, have whitelisted the IP address for uh, for that resource maybe it's uh, some virtual machines inside of a VNet that has a NAT gateway enabled or something like that. Um, and you know, you know for sure what the IP address is going to be inbound of that, of that resource, you can set up the IP restrictions. Um, this isn't a really hard control. It's, uh, more, it's more of a soft control. I think the security folks would prefer to have private, private networking entirely. Um, because you're relying on the software of Azure to, to basically do IP detection and filter out any um, non-whitelisted IP addresses. Um, so anyways, uh, that's, that's an important call out. Looks like the blocks used to be computed um, and maybe if the, you didn't specify them um, and you changed them in the portal, it would automatically like reflect within your, you know, within Terraform state and they wouldn't care. Um, but now it's going to force you to set those values, and, it, and Terraform will present a diff if it if it sees changes. So uh, that's something important to pay attention to, because uh, it could alter the behavior of your of your applications hosted in App Service. Um, we have some new data sources. Um, oh, okay, um, an orchestrated virtual machine scale set. I actually use this at work quite a bit. Um, didn't realize there wasn't a data source for this because we provision it. Um, ourselves, um, but it's nice that there's a data source for that. Didn't, <laughs> haven't needed to use it yet, but um, you know, uh, it's it's always nice to have a data source to, that corresponds with any resource you provision in Azure. Um, looks like new resources are in Databricks, Sentinel, and then those voice, those elusive voice services, um, Databricks virtual networking peering. So uh, that's particularly related to when you're using Databricks that are connected to private networks and you need to peer those private networks together. Looks like that's what that's all about. And then some enhancements. Let's just scan through here. We got app configuration key. So it looks like there was some updates in the in the Azure ARM API that, cha that changed the URL format. Ah. AKS cluster has a OMS agent, so we have an OMS agent schema. So if you wanted to add log analytics logging to an AKS cluster, management group policy assignment for the overrides and resource selectors blocks. So the group group policy assignments when you want to modify the behavior of when you have cascading policies that affect each other within the management group. Of course, we all know there's the hierarchy of Azure as we have subscriptions but above that we have management groups and then below that we have resource groups and then resources and so management groups each of those points you can apply policy um, that that control that and it really makes pol Azure policy is a very powerful tool and, but it really makes most sense when you're applying it at the management group or the subscription level um, because those are those are the the main access control boundaries that, that people use from a security blast radius standpoint. So it looks like resource policy assignment also has some benefits of that. And it looks like looks like all of those 
points where you're assigning policy, um, they added support for this override and resource selectors block. Uh, role assignment. So I use this one a lot, so I just want to see what this is. Support subscription aliases scope. Okay. Um, so maybe a different way to look up the subscription that you're attaching the assignment to. Signal R, support for public network access enabled. Kind of surprised that wasn't enabled, um, but it looks like maybe they're opening up uh, different authentication schemes as well as private networking capabilities for Signal R. So I'll definitely have to check that out. I want to do some stuff with the Signal R and how to how to you know build event driven software on Azure. So we'll we'll be doing that here uh, upcoming. So that'll be a lot of fun. And then Azure Virtual Network Peering, I use this one a lot, so I want to see this one. Explicit default value for allow forwarded traffic. Okay, these are two really tricky properties in the virtual network peering um, because um, they don't match what's in the portal at all. So it's really tricky, like, oh, should this one be true or should this one be false? Um, I should probably create a topic on that specifically um, so that because um, depending on the role of the virtual network and which direction the traffic's going and where your VPN is, um, you're going to want to set different values for each of those. Um, so we'll, I'll probably set up a, use that as a topic in a future video. And then lots of bug fixes. Looks like a lot related to the function app um, and a lot related to the IP restrictions. Um, and I would imagine anything that's touching the app service um, using the IP restrictions is probably going to get a bug fix here. Let's so, so let's filter those out and see what else we got here. Lang language ex extensions on oh, Acousto cluster, um, AKS. What do we got here? Access profiles endpoint within the list user credentials. So trying to keep pace with the Kubernetes open source platform uh, code base firewall. Duplicate name using IP configuration. Okay. App Insights Workspace ID can now be updated without creating a new, new resource. That's interesting. Um, I would think you would need to create a new resource with that. Virtual Desktop Host Pool. Changing the load balancer type no longer creates a new resource. That's very useful because um, virtual, Azure Virtual Desktop, you, you don't want to... That's not... That's one, not one of those resources you want a lot of churn in because it really impacts your users, right? So anything that we can make that doesn't drop create um, is a fantastic addition for that resource just from a stability standpoint of managing production systems. And that's pretty much it for today. A lot of IP restriction stuff. Um, overall, pretty, pretty good release. Please note the breaking changes with regards to the app service. So that's going to do any web apps, any APIs you have hosted in classic.net or Java or whatever. And then any Azure functions could be affected by this as well. Um, if you're being hosted in an um, app, app service plan, which, which you are, either a consumer, or premium, or, or a regular app service plan. So um, that's it for 3.49. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're enjoying the channel. Um, this is it for me from sunny Orlando, Florida. I think we're taking off today, um, so I'll see you from my next destination. Um, keep watching and keep terraforming. This is the Azure Terraformer, signing off.